Today I prove that I am my own man. Today I play the Stanley Parable. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Kind of like what I'm doing right Orders now. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. I know that feeling. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. In case you guys hadn't uh, ever heard about this game, basically, uh, somebody tells you what to do. You can choose to do it or not to do it. It's pretty fun. Where is everyone? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley smelled like Stanley shit. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What? Oh, what did one? Fuck. 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 Ass. Titties. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I ain't a pussy ass bitch. I don't take orders from no one. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Oh. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all. You're damn just right. Just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. It is room. pretty fucking beautiful. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. 10 out of 10. Yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Are you implying really something it. to me, you fucking asshole? At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. <laughs> it's possible that this is why everyone left. I, I already said that it's Stanley's fault. Fine, if you're going to be an asshole about it, but I'll go last, on. He'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. You insulted me. I'm not going to go through that door. You're an asshole. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Thanks. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that you the story insulted has me. been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten Fuck about. Fuck you. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are for assholes like you, that's true. I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Nope. Now listen carefully, this is important. Okay. Stanley walked through the red door. And, oh, cramp in my leg. Perhaps you misunderstood. Fucker. Stanley walked through the red door. I live my own life. I am wild and I am crazy. There we go. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Fucker. Stanley walked through the red door. Maybe he moonlocked into it. Hey, blue door. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. Okay. I won't. 
This is a good life. You see? This is a bad There's life. Nothing here. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Yeah, was not it really. Worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you. Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? Um, what did you want to see? Cars. Skill trees. Yeah. Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Damn. Damn. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. Okay. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Not gonna do it. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about <laughs> your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Okay. A one? Yep. I mean, I can understand if you had reservations, you saw ways the game could be improved to more fully express itself mechanically and artistically, but a one? Yep. That's not even helpful. What am I supposed to do with that? Uh, but I guess it isn't my place to judge. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Let's. Ooh, leaderboard, huh? Hmm. Let's see if they're doing it fast. Good job. <laughs> Where's three percent of players shows a blue door? I'm doing good. Oof. You guys are taking shots. Fine, I'll go through this door finally. Well, your door's shitty, so there's that. Maybe I didn't want to take this door. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. It made me feel terrible about myself. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? I would. Your games uh, suck. Let me boot it up. Please no. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right. This is and terrible. If the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. Oh my... Oh my goodness. I'm done. You, your baby can burn. This is too noisy. I'm sorry. You heartless bastard. Did you Sorry. Know you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve. This the is your fault. Me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your okay. Input was extremely valuable. I hope this never okay, becomes a game. Since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game just to ease the pain? That sounds like a great Let's idea. See. What do we have here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Well, Stanley, is this any better? Actually, this At game last, is very one fun. Thing you've always desired. A game I had absolutely nothing to do with. But is it enough? Tell me that, Stanley. Will it ever be enough? It well, could be. This. I'm done making things for you. From Thank now you. on, I will only create to fulfill a greater artistic purpose. Watch this, Stanley. I'm going to build a house. Knock yourself out. Mm. I hope you do good. <laughs> it's complete. I made this, Stanley. Look at it. Gaze upon my work of art and feel ashamed at your own inadequacy. Oh, I'm impressed. You've from the outside. You've only gotten half the experience. Please, step inside and make yourself comfortable. This seems like a terrible idea. Oh. 
Isn't it grand? Isn't it perfect? It could only be better if... Wait, that's it. We must rebuild it out of diamond. That's a step diamond up. Diamond everything. Yes, yes, yes. Come along, Stanley. We have to go mining. Okay. Oh, oh, it looks like it's going to get a bit dark. Have you brought a light? Nope. Oh, no, 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 no. This is far more open-ended than I had in mind. I'm looking for something more narrow and Whee! linear. Something that makes you feel utterly irrelevant. This won't do at all. One out of five. Even the diamonds couldn't save this one. Okay, new game. <laughs> yes! I don't even know what this game is, but I love it. You, trapped in a glass box with no way out, listening to me talk. Oh, it's inspired. I couldn't have done it any better myself. What is this game even supposed to be? I can't figure it out. Okay, now I'm curious. Let's go find Hammer out Simulator. Critical thinking, Stanley. Your forte. Thank you. Genius. No, actually, you know what? I think that's plenty. No, I'm not going to. I that really way. don't care much to see you stumble through any more of these games, and I highly doubt you're any wiser for the experience. Which is why, rather than continue to waste my time, I'm just going to leave you here. You can pretend you've beaten the game if it makes it any richer for you, but as for me, I've had enough. So, why don't you get cozy in this room, and if you have any grand revolutionary ideas for the perfect video game, you can just sit there and let it ball up inside you for all eternity. I'm brainless. Where are we going to? Oh, hello. Wait a second. Home sweet home. I did it. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. You murdered me. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end. To make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. Okay. Take two. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No, I didn't. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Fuck this life. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? I forgot Stanley the shower. decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor did it advance the story in any way. Pitch it might. I suppose I can make this guy's day.
Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I'm learning things today. Okay. Alright. Blue calm, I understand where you're coming from. Room closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Did I? I want to become the janitor. Let me become the here. janitor. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. God, you're such a whiny bitch! Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Did I do that? Stanley never did that. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. Okay. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. This isn't good, guys. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. I'm gay? He just hadn't found the words for it. Oh. I'm dreaming! Dreaming. This is all a dream. How? Oh. Oh, what a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. Could he be here. To himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still flaccid. Lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. I'm then he imagined himself yeah. soaring through space on a magical star field. <laughs> and it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not given up. How was he remaining so lucid? Flaccid. And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Okay. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley. Okay, well, let's just slow down here. Strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. Let's not go deeper down the rabbit hole it here. Very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams. The truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? I don't know. Stanley I is don't as know. awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Okay. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? <laughs> this voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Please. Let me wake up. 
he thought to himself. Let me wake Thank up. with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please. It's all I want. Okay. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. You can take it, Stanley. My life is normal. I am normal. Here you go. Everything will be fine. I am okay. You better believe it. Here we go. Oh, fuck. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. I win. I beat the game. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Oh, now I'm a woman. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. I cross dress? She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. Asshole. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. You bitch! Alright guys, that's where we're gonna end it for today. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed. Um, if you liked it, tell me to make more. Um, like, comment, favorite, subscribe, tell me what I can do better. Hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you later.